Hello, this is Jared French, and I am coming to you on my research project on Peoria Christian School in Peoria, Illinois. It was established in 1950. It was established by parents of the 1940s. And so my broadly, my research project is on educational leadership. And I'm trying to establish a context for these 40s parents. And so I've been working with the late 1800s, post-bellum era. And so at this point, I'd like to bring the spotlight on the John Spaulding, the first Catholic bishop of Peoria. His dates, birth and death, are 1840 to 1916. His major accomplishment that he's known for is being a co-founder of the Catholic University of America, where they would train priests on American soil. But uh, through Spaulding, we can really get experience the post-bellum era, one aspect of it. And so the post-bellum, there's a westward movement, and Illinois is a hub of influence and innovation. And that's what some of the research I've been doing on Peoria, on the Midwest, and then the biographer of Spaulding notes, you know, he's arriving to a Peoria that's flourishing in the 1870s. It's second in population to Chicago. It's 67th in the nation with 23,000, which would double in less than 30 years. It's a trading center. It's a meeting place for, for nine different railroads. It's a grain elevator site. It's uh, leading the nation in liquor distilling. Uh, the number one Peoria industry is agricultural machinery construction, so tractors. Peoria itself is well planned. The nice paved roads uh, that it, it has, you can pick up. Right, it's right next to the railroads and along the, the Illinois River. And so there's the landscape, physically and economically. And so that's where Spaulding arrives to, to uh, organize 50 priests, 70 churches, to carry for 40,000 Catholics in the Peoria and the surrounding areas. While doing that, he oversaw the building of the first hospital, the Order of St. Francis Hospital in 1877, which is today's Peoria's number one employer. He uh, took up the cause of women's rights, child labor, and education. He was a mediating voice, mediating voice between Catholic and American identities. He, he spoke against the bigotry against Catholics, but he also spoke to Catholics, hey, maintain your Catholic distinction. And he somewhat did that because he could trace his own colonial heritage, uh, and so he spoke as a patriot. He had a philosophy that the American remedy would not be offered by business, businessmen or politician, but by the common man who through the use of reason and religion would add to pure religion the best of intellectual culture. That's why one ev evaluation of Spaulding in the biography says that he really met both Catholics and Protestants in his, his ambitions. And so here you have this Midwestern Peoria voice for post-bellum religious and educational liberty. And it really does, it, it's meant to maintain Catholic and religious distinction in education. Because what's also going on in this time, in, the 18, in 1890, the Mid Midwest Archbishop, Ireland, proposed a solution that the public and parochial schools could combine, could uh, merge. State, the states could rent the Catholic schools. The teachers would be Catholic in faith. They would then qualify to the local school boards. And then they would only teach religion after the, the regular school hours. In response to that kind of thinking, uh, Spaulding and others created what's called the Catholic Education, Educational Exhibit at the World's Fair, the Columbian Exposition, 1893. They argue that education is an organic part of religion. You cannot sequester one from the other, right? You're, you're, you are dealing with religious and, and educational liberty, and you cannot compromise or separate. Now, that, we can obviously talk about what, where that is today, but Spaulding, at least, I think, imparted this upon Peoria. When you look at Peoria promotional material, like an 1896 brief history of, Peor, uh, of Peoria, it, that you have the, the school portion written by the superintendent of public schools, and he writes, the parochial schools are carefully graded and give to the children committed to their care not only elements of the religious abiding faith, but also careful intellectual training. In these schools, $1,000 are invested in scores of teachers employed. And so then you get up to 1920s and 30s, you have a booklet called Prosperous Peoria, and it lists the eight, eight parochial schools right alongside the other educational offerings. So this is post-bellum uh, Spaulding, who helps uh, me get, begin the discussion on the 1940s parents of PCS. 
And so I look forward to hearing and seeing your uh, contributions on the discussion boards. Thank you. Bye.